for joining me. My name is Sroda Aglago, and today I have a guest, Amita. Now, this topic we're going to talk about today is very important to me because I am going through it, and I feel like it's time we talk about this because I have sisters out there, cousins, aunties out there who are going through this same situation, perimenopause, menopause, and I'm confused, but there's hope. And she's here to talk about it, tell us about it, and have a little discussion about the whole thing. So I'm excited. Thank you for joining me. Um, Thank you. Love, Forgive, Live podcast. We are back with such an important topic that I can't say enough about. For me, I think it's powerful that this is a global phenomenon that every woman goes through, but we don't speak about it. I call it a phenomenon because it's like the secret that we don't speak of. <laughs> but this secret needs to come out. My mama didn't tell me. My grandmother didn't tell me. My aunties didn't tell me until, until things started happening to me. And I was like, wait, what? And I'm calling friends. She said, oh, yeah, that happened. I'm like, no, you did me wrong. You should have said something. <laughs> so my guest is here to talk about this because it takes the guesswork out of trying to figure out what's going on with our body. If you're a female, late 30s, 40s, 50s, and even beyond 50 and getting close to 60, yeah. this is for you. And I think even younger than late 30s, you need to know this because our goal now is we need to educate, 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 educate our young ones to look ahead. This is coming. So when it hits them, they are not in shock like the rest of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. You said you just hit the nail on right, you know. That's what we need. And my guest is here to talk about this. I remember when we were talking about this earlier, I was like, what is this about this mystery? What is this? Why? Why has this been kept a taboo topic, secret, and shun away? As though this part of our growing up or this passage that we all have to go through as females doesn't exist. Let's just glaze over it. Everything is about until you have a child, it's wonderful. You know, everything is just there. And when you have a baby, oh yeah, that's it. It's like, oh, don't talk about the rest. <laughs> did we stop as human beings? Like seriously, did we stop as human beings? So my first thing I want to ask you is this. Why is this topic so hard to talk about? Why? Why are we having a hard time talking about perimenopause, menopause? It's, it's you. you uh, I'm telling you, this is a universal problem all over the world. I was shocked that in United States, right, a most developed country in the world, we don't talk about it. We are ashamed. I'm like, oh my God, what is going to happen to the rest of the world if women over here who are predominantly, you know, working and in financially independent, and we are so scared, ashamed. And I was too. Yeah. Honestly, the issue is we don't even know what perimenopause is. See, that's the problem. Yes. I didn't. I didn't too. I'm, I'm like, I'm having a heart flash right now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I so that is the problem, Sroda, is that we understand menopause, we understand puberty. The periods are coming up, the periods are going down. In between, you're supposed to have babies and shut, shut the F up in between after the babies and when the periods come, come down, right? Excuse my yes. language, but really, yeah. honestly. That's what's happening to us. Right? That's what's happening to women all over the world. And yes. menopause, we understand, but nobody talks to you that 10 years before you're going to hit that 
off button, your mm-hmm. body is going to go all these roller coaster ride. Nobody tells yes. you. Nobody tells you. So how the heck are you going to be prepared? How the heck you know what the heck is happening? And, and that is a fundamental issue on education, awareness. Even now, if you go talk to a woman on the street and ask her this question, say, what the heck is that? I have no idea. No, no, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> and he asks, they look at you like, and the strangest thing is when I call my mother, when I experienced my first one and I can share with you and I have no qualms about it. If anybody wants to mock me, have a great time. But here's <laughs> what, one afternoon I was done with uh I think I had fewer clients that day and I said, okay, I'm just going to sit down and relax. I sat down in my recliner to my surprise. I had this excruciating pain in my breast thumping that this, Oh, it was painful. It just kept pushing. It, It felt like something was going wrong in my body. And I was like, ouch, I screamed. I was like, ouch, ouch. Then I was like, what was that? It took my breath away for a second. And I was like, what was that? So of course my mentor, who is also a friend of mine, she's a pharmacist and I was like, okay, something just happened to me. Should I be worried? Should I be going to the hospital? What's going on? And she said, oh, congratulations. And I was like, what do you mean, congratulations? Mm-hmm. And she said, you're getting some hormonal changes. So, so I think you're either in perimenopause or meripausal because hormonal changes will give you pain in your body. And you will have pain there too. And I was like, what do you mean? Why, why didn't I know this? And she said, oh, welcome. We don't talk <laughs> about it. And I said, no, you did me wrong. You should have told me. She said, well, I'm telling you now. And I said, why do you feel like I don't need to know this stuff? She said, I don't know. We just never talk about it. <laughs> and that's when I was like, oh, I went online to check. And then I didn't even know this one until I had surgery, I noticed my tongue, red dots on my tongue. And I was like, why do I have red dots on my tongue? What's going on? And I went online to look up. Oh yeah, hormonal changes. (laughs) What? I had to go and find out online? I didn't know. So what exactly is it that keeps people not wanting to speak about this? You know, uh, the thing is, I'll tell you. So so there's a lot of things going on. First of all, typically we go to OBGYN, not that I'm trying to show them down or anything, but all around the world, forget about United States, let's say all around the world, OBGYNs or medical doctors are not taught about this whole perimenopause, menopause. The focus is on reproductive system, the fertility, the puberty, and that phase of the life. Or when you're old enough, like 65 and up, Medicare, you know? So Mm -hmm. so in between phase is like forgotten completely. They don't even, they're not even taught in medical schools. And I've talked to so many OBGYNs. They said, no, we were never taught about it. How the heck are we going to tell uh, our patients to t- uh, that that this is going to happen? So now endocrinologists is, uh, are the hormone fl- uh, gurus, but you know, who goes to endocrinologists? Nobody goes I've to endocrinologists. Never been one. I don't even know where to find them. <laughs> <laughs> I, me too. I don't even know they exist. Right? Internal medicine. So the people we are going to, internal medicine doctors and OBGYN as women, they have they are completely not completely clueless. They they are not being aware of in their education, so they don't tell you. And then endocrinologists are the one they know, but we don't know who the heck they are, and we don't even know how to find them. (laughs) Oh my goodness! 
So God help. The, the only way endocrinologists, someone would go, someone has a really, you know, big issues like infertility and some of those other things, then they are going to the endocrinologist for hormone therapy and all that stuff. But that's a serious medical condition. So for normal women like you and me, uh, you know, we have no clue. I had no clue. I was sweating like a pig, you know, and, and sitting in front of like 20 people. And I thought I was having a heart attack. I oh. did not know. And I thought, oh, my God, I need to go to the hospital, like you said. And sure mm -hmm. enough, it was a sign of perimenopause, hot flashes, which I was caught completely like, oh, my God, by the surprise. Off guard. Yeah, it completely off guard, completely surprised. I was angry. I was frustrated because I couldn't concentrate on my work, I, my productivity. All those things started, impact, it, it started impacting my life. And at that mm -hmm. time, you mm -hmm. know, Imagine we when women are in their 40s or even late 30s, you yes. know, your career is so important. You have worked so hard 10 years or 15 years, and now you're yes. reaching a certain point in your career. Like if you're in the corporate world, mm -hmm. you know, you are at the peak of your, like you could be a director or whatever level that you want to be. And suddenly this thing starts happening and you are like yeah. ashamed. That, like, oh my God, oh my God, what am I going to tell my male colleagues who are in the boardroom or whatever right yes <laughs> excuse me i am now not pregnant no 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 don't congratulate me but i am going through even i don't know what the heck i'm going through exactly right you know and then we sound stupid but we are not yeah yeah seriously we we, we think that we, i mean we honestly all these education we are all educated extremely highly educated women yes. and we don't even know what the heck is going on i mean that is the yeah. irony right i can understand yes. our our parents generation my mom generation that time i can understand that but mm -hmm. not our generation yes you're right we have so yeah. much information available but we don't know even where to look we don't understand. And yes, like you were saying, you felt ashamed. I felt ashamed that, wait, this is my body. I'm living in it. This is what I interact in this world with. Yes. And yet I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't exactly. know what is happening. And I don't know how to get help for it. I don't know how to even talk about it and gets because I'm not even sure what I, I would talk about except for that pain but how do I even start yes by communicating this to my family to my friends and then even ask questions like what is it that we hope to gain from this secrecy from this don't talk about it. <laughs> Let's act as it doesn't exist. And then the only thing I always used to hear was, oh, hot flashes. Oh, you yes. just get hot flashes. There's and so much more. So what is it that we hope to gain from not speaking about it? What were people thinking about? We are screwed up as a society. <laughs> Excuse me. But, you know, yeah. because it's not only hot flashes. You know that. Um there are over 35 plus symptoms that are recorded. A woman can, you know, a woman who's going through perimenopause, menopause and, and postmenopause. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily all the 34 symptoms are bombarding at me. Hope not. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, right? But typically think about it. If someone is having a heart flashes, like I, you know, I shared my experience, I'm having problems sleeping at night. So night sweats, right? Then in the morning, I'm cranky. Right? Because I haven't had a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. So I'm not productive and I have anxiety issues. So Look at the three, four symptoms, sleep, anxiety, heart flashes, night sweats, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so the, so and on an average, I can correlate three or four symptoms any woman can have at a given time. Yes. Uh, and, and you don't know what to do. And, and on top of that, a lot of women end up putting on weight. Um, yes. Yeah, that right? was my situation. Gained significant amount of weight such a quick time. And yeah. I was... I was flustered because I work out 
yeah, me too. I work out too. I mean, I'm fine now, but but same thing happened with me. And the yes. abdominal weight would not just that tire would not go away. Oh my it god. It would go away. That yes, that roll of tire around. <laughs> and I kept listen, I did P90X. I did uh, and I walked and then I tried running. Then I tried jogging, jump Ooh. rope. Um, I don't do sugar. I cut out meat. I said, okay, I only do fish. <laughs> Oh, I went through it. Then I was like, okay, maybe. And then I was like, okay, then I won't eat white bread. Okay, I cut processed foods, all processed foods out. And I'm like, okay, I stopped eating chocolate. The only chocolate that I still eat now is the ones from Ghana. Oh, with my four God. ingredients in them. That's it. Some of them have um, 60, 60, for 56% uh, cacao. Uh, some some of them are 75, 76%. So it's bitter. Yeah. But I'm like, well, chocolate is good for you. So let me eat two bars. <laughs> and a, a bar, you know, a thin bar, like, you know, the, with the sizes that they make from Ghana, yeah. I would eat maybe one or two and then save it. So by the time that bar is finished, it takes at least six months. That's how much I'm depriving myself. Yes, Thinking, and and the weight is still not going. It's still not going. And oh my god! Because it's the hormones, right? Your hormones are not balanced. That's the problem, and and nobody knows what the heck the weight is not going. I was the same way. I tried everything, and then suddenly. When I started researching three, four years back, you know, I said, uh, you know, I always believed in holistic wellness, right? So yeah. I started researching into all kind of different, different things. And, and then I started interviewing experts, holistic experts all over the world. And that's when I realized, oh, my God, it's the hormone balance. The hormones yeah. are imbalanced because of what women are going through in perimenopause phase. The hormones are starting to go down. Sometimes the balance between the two hormones is not being maintained and that's what's causing this weight gain. So mm -hmm. you have to, you know, you know, we know the hormones are going down. That's, that's yeah. a fact that's mm -hmm. going to happen to all the women, but to balance these two hormones, that's what is needed. And if you are able to balance these hormones, you will be okay. But most of the time, the balance How do you do that? <laughs> exactly but we don't know we don't yes. know that where to go to ask these questions and all these exercise of cardio going up like crazy going to iron man going to running it's not going to help no matter what you do because the internal your internal system is doing what it's doing and you need to balance it and we don't know and i'm telling you 99.99% women except for the medical professionals or health professionals mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. don't understand that this is the problem and we are yes. going crazy and we are depriving the nutrients that is so important to nourish ourselves. We're depriving yes. ourselves. Yes, yes, That's we the do. Problem. We do. Um, right? All of us, all of us women do that. Yes, because when we cut out all these foods, <laughs> we're left there. Is somebody else asking me, what do you eat? Yes. And I was like, I do eat. I <laughs> I've now substituted a lot of millet, millet flour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so I would use that, or I would use spelt and all that. And you know, one of my friends goes, "I want to invite you over for dinner, but I don't know what you eat." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "I'm sorry. I never wanted to be one of those people that's always so picky with your food." But yes. that's what I'm end up. I ended up. With. Yes. Yeah. You know, same here. I, and you know, it is so bad for you because guess what's going to happen? You are depriving these nutri uh, nutrients in your body. You're going to hair is going to start thinning. Thinning. It's again a perimenopause menopause symptom. Your skin is going to get loosened up, collagen, right? And mm -hmm. then all the deficiencies. Your bone health can go down. Oh my gosh! Right. You you can yes, end up sorry, my cat is so osteoporosis, dementia, your memory because you're not feeding your brain now. You could be prone to memory oh, issues. Oh. Seriously, diabetes, your blood sugar can pre-diabetic, your heart health. So you know. Oh my gosh! Yeah, seriously, eighty percent of women over fifty-five years old have one chronic condition in the United States. 
80 percent what yes and this there are crazy. more women who are prone to osteoporosis heart health diabetes all these issues that i talked about even cancer for that matter breast cancer all those things there are more women who are more high, uh, at the risk than men of all these chronic conditions and i'm not saying there is direct correlation to perimenopause but there is some kind of a you know there's not enough research that has been done but mm -hmm. if someone do some researchers researchers were to do i can bet you there will be some correlation they will find the lack of care during these years leading up to the chronic conditions there has to be wow we are in a predicament because we are having this happen and then you're having serious physical issues happening yes neurological mm -hmm. and then of course we have the sleep deprivation mm -hmm. We have, because sleep deprivation can result in so many things. We can become incredibly fatigued. Mm -hmm. Now you have all that happening to us yeah. without any answers, not enough research. Yes, not enough research at all. Pinpoint, hey, this one, okay, so wow, isoporosis, wow, let's see this. All this is stemming from lack of this imbalance is affecting all these things, but we are not even getting the data to cooperate it. Because, because no women to try and figure out, hey, oh, I figured this out. I figured this out. Let's put it all together. Nobody's doing that. So then we are left to our own device to do and figure out something. Mm -hmm. And what we figure out could be only a puzzle, one piece of the puzzle. It's not the whole thing. So when you look at it, it's not because it's, it's not um, matching up. It's not working together. I get my little piece. Another person get their little piece. Another person get their little piece. They're like, "Oh wow, there's a correlation," but I'm not sure how. This person said, oh, "There's a correlation." Color um, color I can't even say my word anymore. There's a correlation between this and that too. But great, wouldn't it be nice if we could put all this data together and then look at it yeah, and see, hmm, when all this is put together, we have one culprit in mind, hormonal imbalance. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, how did we miss this? Why isn't anybody doing this? It's it, well, well, it is work is happening now, uh, but but uh, you know, all these years, women have been in existence for thousands of years, right? Uh, but nothing has happened. But now the work has beginning to happen. I wouldn't say that nothing is happening now. Mm -hmm. UK has come a long way. They, in fact, they are trying to pass a mandate in the government, in the government health system, that every woman over forty gets this uh, awareness of, of or, or testing of her perimenopause and and you know there is some kind of awareness that's happening to women at that oh, time man. yeah they, they're taking it all the way to the government so we also have to do that it has to come in the health system we, yes. this cannot be an a side kind of a gig over there right <laughs> no. <laughs> it, no, it. So, uh, so uh, uh, you know, and Dr. Biden is trying to do that. She has put, to, uh, put uh, you know, sort of like a women research, um, sort of like a mandate, and uh, she has uh, put the research out there. So now let's see what happens, who wins in the, yes. the election year. So I wish it had been done four years back so we would have had some, made some advancement or mm -hmm. some kind of a progress that could have been done. This just happened like two months back. That's wow, a so it's, this is really, it's infancy. Yeah, completely infancy. They're just beginning to start with some government organizations to start the research on women's health, literally in the perimenopause, menopause phase. But now we don't know, as you know, government agencies take years before something yes. comes out of that. And then this being an election year, we, we don't know again what will happen. <sighs> We have a lot. 
Yes, we have a lot. Mm-hmm. So until then, what we can do is mm-hmm. we have we have having these kind of our talks, you know, as many uh, discussions uh, to make women aware, you know, what is it that they can do until we can't wait until the government or the national system That's puts true. it right, puts it in the health system, a medical health system where mm-hmm. the women are treated, uh, the health equity is what I call it for the women of this age group is not treat, treated right. The health equity does not exist, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? The mm-hmm. health equity exists for other phases of women's life, but not for this phase. But until then, forums like this, forums like, uh, you know, uh, what we are trying to do at Nourish Talk, uh, other, uh, there are other people, other uh, coaches who are trying to educate. So those are the ones we build a community around it Yes. to educate as many women as possible to start taking mm-hmm. care of themselves, a self-care and then the exercise. Yes, yes, yes. Self-care is such a crucial part of uh, this stage in our lives. Um, I think self-care is so crucial because it gives us something to do. Mm-hmm. And at least when you start focusing on your self-care, you start noticing a change yeah. in you. I recognize that because when I take my self-care seriously, I feel like I'm in this strange flow. Yeah. That just keeps me going because when I wake up and I do my meditation, I do my prayers, get my things done, then I work out. I work out, I make sure I get my protein in first yes. thing after I finish workout. Yeah. Then after that, I go about and and do my meditation. And mm-hmm. then when I, I do stuff like that, yeah. then I'm like, okay, I'm ready to take on the world. I feel so much better. And I feel like I'm smiling throughout the day because I can do things and I'm able to work, focus and then, oh, of course, I, I do take a lot of supplement because I need, uh, you were speaking about the mental, like how you forget. And then you're like, what is going on? I had severe mental fog. <laughs> oh, my God. The mental fog was bad. And yeah. I would walk around. I'm like, I just don't want to, I'll be frowning. and just go like, I don't understand. <laughs> And then I started, like I with you, you researched. I researched and researched, and I came up with all kinds of stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, this will help me. This will help me. This will help me. And I started taking those things. Then within a month to two months, I started noticing that change in me that I'm actually beginning to focus better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I could multitask. I could um, read something and then remember. Mm-hmm. And now I'd go like, what? Now I could. But during the time that I was so confused because I didn't know what was happening to my body, it was yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah. It was hard because, like you said, imagine going to the boardroom for a meeting and they said they sent something else for everybody to read before they come. <laughs> you haven't read it. You don't even know where you put it. No, it's 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 uh, so... But you are in the health wellness industry, so you uh, were able to kind of feel the layers and and figure it out themselves, uh, yourself, right? In the sense, yes. right? But yes. an average woman who is clueless, how the heck she's going to peel the layer and figure it out? I mean, she's going to yes. suffer in silence. Yes. You, you, yes. we are, you know, it, so to speak, women are suffering in silence, and they they accept it as part of aging, and they say, oh, I'm going to get old, and this. It, it's like okay, everybody's suffering, so am I suffering? That's and so sad. It's very true. sad. Very sad. That's true, you know. And the data talks about they did some research of uh, working women in America, and mm-hmm. and the data says exactly the same thing. They don't feel uh, confident in to- going and talking to the HR, as an example. They feel that they should keep it to themselves. Mm. Quite a few of them think of quitting their jobs. They, they don't want to seek promotion, you know, because they work so hard. But they said, oh, if I get, get promoted, then, uh, you know, all these symptoms are 
prohibiting her to, oh, to work her best. Goodness. Yeah, the, the day, because you know, if you look at the data, 54 is an average age in, in America when a, someone becomes a CEO. So think about all the, you know, if, let's say you start working at age 21. So you've got a 30 years of decent experience of doing all kinds of things. And at age 54 is the right age for, for any CEO to, to become CEO. Now, a 54-year-old man, yes, fine. But a 54-year-old woman is going menopausal for sure. We know it's because of the age. Mm -hmm. And so now if she's not able to, uh, you know, kind of have the same kind of a, uh, business, you know, sort of like a personal uh, health or a physical health and mental health the same way that she should have to be able to work or do her job mm -hmm. at age 54 because of her hormonal imbalance, how like she's going to perform the work, her productivity, mm -hmm. all those things are going to get impacted and she doesn't know what the heck to do. And she probably is taking medication for heart flashes. That's what I'm, I'm guessing. That's, yeah, you know? Because that's the most important the, the yeah. most important one that they talk about. That's the it, it, that yeah. obvious one that is talked about and dealt with. And it's like, oh, well, the rest is like, oh, well. Yeah. So, so how the heck she's going to become a CEO and lead a company of 10,000 people when she herself is, oh, my God, you know? And, and nobody's selling her because she doesn't have the time. Think of, of her life. I mean, she's working like a crazy maniac here, uh, you know, all the things. And then she doesn't have time to take care of herself. And when she goes to a medical system, she's given a pill and she pops a pill. And before you know it, in 10 years, she's like completely, oh, my God, I'm done. I don't want to work. I am burnt out and I am now going to retire. Right. I mean, that's yeah. a story of a lot of people out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just sad because if they only had answers, yes, yes. they'll make better decisions mm -hmm, or different mm -hmm. decisions. But because there isn't anything available. So my question is this, how does one go about asking for support from their family, their friends, their work environment? How do they ask for support? So, you know, the work has to make it accessible. The work has to be educated workplaces. And that's what we are trying to do. You know, reaching some of the workplaces, reaching some of the decision makers. This has to happen at a, at a society level because, because yeah. we don't understand it. And I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just saying the lack of understanding in the system. Yes. Uh, right. So, but, you know, we, we can make a difference now. You and I can make a difference. Uh, so, so that's how you start educating people. The funny thing is, you know, in the last couple of days, guys interviewed me and they said, oh, my God, my partner is going through it. I oh want to God. understand. Mm -hmm. And, and, and yeah. so things like that, you know, this should be actually taught in, in, in somewhere in high school or some yes. educate system that the women, the girls are going to go through this and the boys are also going to go through midlife, uh, you know, hormone mm -hmm. fluctuations. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that they're aware of that. Nobody's yes. aware. So how do you how, imagine, I, I can't even begin to tell, I was trying to talk to my mom and she didn't understand the damn thing because she comes from a generation. She was never taught yes. about <laughs> That's a yeah, problem. Because to her, what do you want? Why, why are you so bothered? Yeah, she said, no, this happens to everyone. I'm, you know, whatever. So suck it up, right? I'm like, no, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to get down to the bottom of it, right? So our generation is very different is what I'm saying. And we are blessed in the sense we are educated women. We can make a difference. We are trying to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think we one drop at a time you can say it you know the to fill a bucket or whatever you want to say it yeah that's that's how we start doing it hmm. it's smart because together we can bring knowledge yes to something that has been shielded absolutely we, we 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 combine our energies. We we mm -hmm. strengthen together. Mm -hmm. We come together as a community of mm -hmm. of of uh, you know all these educators who uh, who understands the space mm -hmm. and also influences like yourself, so that more any women when they learn about it. So that is how this is like a movement. I yes. you know like a Me Too movement happened a few years and so many women came out. 
this is like the world movement. Women have to come out and say, hey, I am going through this. It's okay not to yes. change. Yes, yes. And it's uh, what I think the more we speak about this, the more we blow the, we take the lid off and yes. allow things to just come up. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Let's deal. Let's make this normal. Let's exactly. make this conversation normal. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a phase of life. It's, it's, a, it's literally a phase of a woman's life that everyone's mm -hmm. going to go through. Mm -hmm. And then how does a person start the conversation you know you're coming to your family your friends yeah. and then you want yeah. to start the conversation how does a person start this it's, because uh, they, when they know and if yeah. they know what is happening or at least start a conversation to kind of ask some questions how does a person start doing this it's it's hard right because they don't know they don't understand this at all so i think it, it again starts with the um educating them about the hormonal imbalance that is happening mm -hmm. in a woman's body, right? Because of the, you know, the ovaries are stopping production of the eggs, so to speak. So I think you can start the discussion in, in, in a very scientific way that the mm -hmm. science is, you know, rather than, oh, I'm going crazy. Oh, my mood swings are going, you know, rather than that. <laughs> <laughs> which nobody will have any empathy like yeah you're going crazy so am i going crazy right you know what yeah. i'm saying <laughs> so but but if you have the discussion in a scientific way and uh, you know really citing the science that, that that's what the woman's woman's body goes through and during this mm -hmm. time i'm going to be have, I, I could have some kind of a uh, you know different mood swings or hey just or some kind of anxiety so just just bear with me <laughs> until i figure it out <laughs> yes oh i think that's a brilliant answer because imagine coming to your friends and your family and say hey i don't really know what's going on yeah, yeah. but i'm struggling with this yeah. um some days i might be just moody i don't want to but some days i just want to hang out and just yeah. Have a great time laughing, and after that, I want to be left alone. I want, yeah. I'm going to be like this, and I might come across you, for you as a strange person because yeah. I used to not be this way, but yeah. now I'm doing that. Yeah. Could you imagine having the conversation with our loved ones and then explaining that to them, and then they'll be like, "Oh, yeah, you need a minute. You don't need to ask. You don't yeah. need to worry about it. Just go take however long." Yeah, time yeah. we need to get through it. I think that would be wonderful if we can just talk to each other like that mm -hmm. and not be scared that we will be laughed at, not be scared that they'll be like, oh my gosh, you're this, you're that, you're this. We need to open this dialogue. And then when we talk about it, I think it gives us something to hold on to that we are okay. You know, because the chaos will make you doubt your sanity. Mm -hmm. It will make you doubt your sanity. So if somebody is starting a conversation, it's important now. How do we know when the family is finally offering the support? How will we see it? How will we notice it that, oh, this is how it looks like that is support? How does that look like? So I think uh, the family is support that, that you're absolutely right. But on the other hand, I think each woman out there should seek self-care, should seek uh, help. Because uh, because I don't think we should suffer all these symptoms and grin it and bear it. I think we should really understand mm -hmm. what is it that we can do as women to help ourselves navigate this whole journey. Because this mm -hmm. journey could be 10 years long. You mm -hmm. Seriously. It's a long journey, right? So yes. you expect your family members to 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 understand you for ten years. You know that is maybe asking a bit too much, to be honest with you. Yes. So I think I think it's our um, as a woman, uh, I would say that all women should really understand what's happening in their bodies as far as the yes. different symptoms and what mm -hmm. is it that they can do uh, to help themselves not to to manage those symptoms. 
and what kind of lifestyle modifications they can make to help mm -hmm. themselves. I think that's mm -hmm. very important. So I think that has to happen in conjunction with the family thing. But if a woman doesn't do anything to help herself and expect the family to understand for 10 years, mm -hmm. guess what? Th th there could be an issue. We know yeah, that big time. Right? <laughs> big time, big time issues. Yes. And, and and we know the gray divorce is on the rise. We know that, right? Women in their mid ages are get more getting divorced more than the younger ages because of yeah. the lack of communication and most mm -hmm. more than likely. Mm -hmm. I'm not attributing the whole world is falling apart because of menopause, but mm -hmm. there is there is a correlation. In UK, they've done a study on that. So mm -hmm. so I think it's very important for women to really take charge of their own health uh, and the whole wellness do it very proactively, mm -hmm. investing in herself, really understanding the symptoms that she's having. What is it that, okay, that I can do to help myself, you know, seek help, yes. whether it's a naturopathic doctor, whether it's a self-care, whether it is whatever is what I'm saying, you know? Mm -hmm. I like that. And then I think once people are able to see the importance of the self-care and then communication, how does a person begin to take the first step towards their own mm -hmm. healing or their own finding answers to get themselves to a place? Where is the first place that you start from? So it's it's it difficult. I'll be honest with you, right? And that's why, um, you know, to give you the answer, there's not an easy way because if you go online and everybody's saying something else, or so, so, someone else is saying something else, and then yeah. you don't know what to believe, what not to believe, and it's also very individualized. It's very personalized. You know, I could be facing what I explained to you. You could have some other issues. Yeah. So I think. So, so you need almost like a neutral place where women can go in and say, okay, this is what, this, these are the facts. This is what I'm going to go through. And this is what I can do, right? That's really yeah. the place uh, that we need. Because if I go, some doctor saying, you know, if I go to a doctor's website, they're explaining it. But then the thing is, okay, call me. So it's a very salesy kind of a thing. Okay, call me and then I will tell you what's wrong with you and I'll fix you, right? Most of the time it's like that. So where do you go? It's like a Wikipedia of menopause <laughs> where <laughs> I can go. No right? doubt. <laughs> right? Yes. So, <laughs> where can I go? I can find information which is not biased, which is nobody's trying to sell me anything. Some, someone is telling me the facts the way it is. Someone is telling me the, my body the way it's going to behave. Somebody mm -hmm. is telling me something that's based on research and scientific. Mm -hmm. That's what women need, right? Mm -hmm. yes. well, because... Because I can spend thousands, thousand dollars, you know, going to a naturopathic doctor and they say, oh, this is it. Now do this test, do the Dutch test, this test. I'm like, before I know, I'm out of thousands of dollars. Still, I'm not fixed. <laughs> yes. I, I'm, kidding. I'm, I'm not kidding. You're right. I had, um, and this is a mistake I made, but it's a lesson learned. I was on a quest to get, to make sure I feel better and and do these things. And I thought, okay, I'll go to naturopath practitioner. Yeah. yeah. And somebody recommended one for me. And then I contacted a person. The person said, okay, initially, this is how much it's going to cost you just yeah. for the consultation. I was like, okay, I'll pay. Yeah. Then she said, I need you to buy this. I need to buy this supplement. I need to buy this. I need to... And then that's the first time I heard about prebiotics mm -hmm. and probiotics. Yeah. I had no idea there was anything like that. And she said, okay, you need to buy this one from here. And I, I, you know, I was like, okay, do I just go? She said, no, 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 I'll buy that for you. How much is everything going to cost? Um, the consultation fee was like $390 or something. Then um, the to buy all the stuff that I needed to mm -hmm. buy was an additional 400 and something. Mm -hmm. And I paid all that at once. Because I was just desperate. I, when I mean desperate, I was so desperate to mm -hmm. feel good, to feel better. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I did. I don't know what happened. I never mm -hmm. got any products. Oh, my God. Nothing. So I was frustrated. And I was like, okay, that's it. If I can't get anything, and this one was recommended from somebody who's right, you know, I really trust and mm -hmm. the person recommended me. 
yeah. and this is what happened. I called mm -hmm. to try and get mm -hmm. absolutely my, my supplements mm -hmm. and stuff back. Oh, and I said, hey, if you can't, just send me the product money. Keep the consultation money. Mm -hmm. Just never heard for anything. So I, at this point, I got frustrated. That's why I started going online to do my own research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this and, is a bad experience that happened to you. Normally, it should not have happened. Yeah, it shouldn't have. So, mm -hmm. um, like, just learning from you today, I learned endocrinologist. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even know what kind of doctor that is. I don't even know how to go and find one. Like, what does a person do? Mm. You know, so one thing I would like to know how can you help someone mm -hmm. navigate this? Because you said you're mm -hmm. working on yes. creating, bringing everything together mm -hmm. for people to come and navigate that and find out, oh my goodness, there's something I can do. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. somewhere I could go, someone I could talk to, to get some answers. Mm -hmm. How are you bringing people together in this sense? So, so we talk about the problem. So I am an average woman out there, like millions of them out there, mm -hmm. who's non-medical. So the way I thought that we should get the information, I put myself in place of millions of women out there, is that unbiased uh, yes. you know, facts, mm -hmm. uh, unbiased research-based, science-based, what is it that I can do? And that's exactly what my thought was. And also the third thing is affordability. I know yes. an average woman cannot spend what you did, 700,000 bucks, just to find out, oh, this is what, and then it worked, it doesn't work, whatever. So yeah. the way we are bringing it together is that unbiased, basically facts in a simple, affordable way that a woman would would be able to understand what is perimenopause, what is menopause, what kind of symptoms that she's going to experience, what yeah. is it that she can do actionable things to change mm -hmm. her lifestyle based mm -hmm. on her symptoms. When I'm talking about the lifestyle, I'm talking about the diet, I'm talking about the movement, I'm talking about you know, even simple supplements, herbs, but we don't recommend that you should experiment by yourself, but at least these are the ones that are good. You know, yes. you're talking about hy hypnotherapy, you're talking about counseling, you're talking about aromatherapy, you're talking about Ayurveda, yoga, breathing, meditation. There's a lot of things women can do, put it together. So we are presenting mm -hmm. it in a way, affordable, less than $10 a month. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can get it. Nobody's doing that in the whole world. Less mm -hmm. than $10 a month, a woman can, uh, you know, understand what's going on and start the self-care journey. And in this, this is what I thought I would want to have. And I'm mm -hmm. willing to pay a little bit, not, not, you know, not a lot, but a little bit because, and then what I'm trying to do is do, in, with, even within this $10, I'm, we are going to bring an expert once a month, um, no consultation and you can ask questions once mm -hmm. a month right mm -hmm. so and then the next step would be a little bit more expensive like 60 to 70 dollars somewhere over there but then every week you will have an expert so you can ask questions so mm -hmm. then the third tier is okay i am not feeling good i need to get one-on-one -on -one consultation or whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it mm -hmm. that's the third tier and that mm -hmm. would be like $250 a month where you mm -hmm. have a team, like one naturopath, one dietitian, one maybe movement specialist. I won't call it yoga specialist. Some people don't want to do yoga movement mm -hmm. specialist. And, and the fourth could be a counselor, you know, some with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So that's how we are building this tier system so that women feel empowered by the yes. time they reach the third, right? Yes. They know the questions to ask. They mm -hmm. understand their body. They have tried the self-care. They're yes. not waiting for the medication. All these things are so important for yes. women to feel empowered. And that's what we mm -hmm. I'm I'm in my humble way I love attempting it. to do. Attempting to do. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important thing because it's one place that they could come to, and then mm -hmm. the questions they have, they're getting answers. Yes, yes. And that's so the whole idea. Who do I go to? You're right there. Where do yeah. I go? Right there. Well, oh, yeah. you're right there. Because yes. it takes the guesswork out. Exactly. I mean, 
the research I did, I did a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just me. And, and, you know, my friends, when they come, they're like, oh, my gosh, you're taking all these things. And I was like, and they were like, how do you find out? I was like, I just did my own research. Yeah. But yes, that is dangerous too. Yes. It's, it's very dangerous because you can experiment and you don't know what the heck is going on, right? Yes. It's, it's dangerous to do that. But I feel like what the tools you're providing is giving people a guide mm -hmm. to guide them through each step so they're not going in alone. They're not saying, oh, yeah, I'm doing this. Meanwhile, wait, what's that coming from? Are, are you sure this? Hold on. Is this going to affect the medication you're taking? Yes. What is this going to do to you? Mm -hmm. You need to know. Is this safe? Is this this? Is this? We need to be able to come somewhere and collectively put all that information together and say, okay, I've got access to this. I've got access to this and this and that. And that helps me feel more empowered and more mm -hmm. uh, prepared. Yeah, so you don't want to be caught caught by surprise, right? No, because we've been there, mm -hmm. done that. Mm -hmm. Definitely going forward, those that are coming from behind us, they know that when they get here, this is how the package is put together. Oh, great. So that doesn't mean I'm done. No, you're not done with life. This is not a time to give up on you. Yes. This is absolutely. a time to find information, to learn mm -hmm. more about yourself, and then find out what you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and I refuse to believe after this, you know, in our 50s, we feel like, oh, yeah, we are done. No, 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 no. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not done. <laughs> so <laughs> the rest can know that there's hope. You know, now that I think back, um, when I was in my 20s and, and early 30s, if you ask me, you know, so what do you think your 50s would be like? I couldn't fathom it. I It just, no, just never came to me. I, I was like, I don't know, I'll probably be thinking about retirement. No, I'm not thinking about retirement at all. I'm getting started now. Because... Now that we know we can go somewhere to get information, you have no idea how exciting it is. And it stops me from trying to guess. Yes. And hoping to try this and hope it works. Which is not safe. It's best to do it with a guide in the process. Exactly. Now, when you thought about doing this and creating this platform or this gathering for people, what was the most important vision about that for you? I, I just wanted every woman in the world be empowered. I wanted it accessible and I wanted to make it affordable and credible information. So affordability was a big thing on, for me. Because I really want to serve women in Africa, women in India, you know, who are working in, in, in farmland, right? I'm not talking about educated women at this time. Mm -hmm. no, I'm talking about mm -hmm. women who are barely making $2 a day. So mm -hmm. how do I serve that woman out there whose husband, like I've visited so many nonprofits in India as an example, their husbands are alcoholic. The woman is the only breeder earner in the family. How do I serve that woman? I'm talking that. I wanted yes. to make a difference in the society. Mm -hmm. so, how, so affordability was very, very important for us to create yes. the way to create this platform mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also giving them credible information and tools. So this was very important. And we want to serve as many yes. women out yes. there. Yes. yes. Yeah. I love it. And I'm really... Um, Loving the part that the uh, that you want to serve the answer serve women. Yes, I because do. Because don't have access, and they're working so hard. Oh my God, much more than you and I are, and we are yes. so blessed. We are so blessed. I and tell everyone. Yes, and because when I'm seeing how hard they're working, mm -hmm. my goodness, something has to happen. 
Absolutely. So I applaud you and thank you so much. Bless you for seeing this gap mm -hmm. that was not being filled and yes. wanting to put yourself out there and do something about it. So I appreciate you and I, I thank you so much that you're seeing this space needs to be filled. And you're doing this, I mean, this is what I feel passionate about. Women who are working so hard and not seeing that anyone is looking yes. or noticing. Yes. But we notice. Mm -hmm. Exactly, we notice. We notice and mm -hmm. we feel their heart because we see the sacrifices they're making for the family. Yes. And we can't say, oh, well, why don't they just, they just leave? We don't, we don't know their circumstances. So mm -hmm. we can't make those judgments and those comments. And I remember in my young days, I'll be like, why would anybody put up with this kind of suffering? Well, mm -hmm. that was my ignorance self that didn't know. Yeah. Yes. Now that I'm grown and I'm seen and learn, I'm like, wow. This needs to be addressed. So thank you so much for doing this and creating a platform for women to feel like they're not done. They can get access to what they need mm -hmm. and they can do something about their own health, their mental health, their physical health, their uh, emotional health and hormone wise because the brain is so important. Mm -hmm. And if we don't take care of what, what we need to take care of, we don't want to be running. You know, people wish say, oh, yeah, when we get to that age, we start running around like banshees and yelling. We are not yelling because we want to. It's because something is happening. My grandmother always says, the emptiest barrel makes the loudest noise. Mm -hmm. When she feels depleted, yes, she doesn't have anything to go on. Mm -hmm. She will scream. She would yeah. make the noise and yeah. hope somebody would hear so that they could say, oh, you're empty. Let's try and fill you up. Mm -hmm. Let's give you what you need. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're doing. You're noticing that they are being emptied out. And you said, let me give you what you need to fill this barrel so you can feel like you're giving something to yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, how do our guests get in touch with you or our audience get in touch with you? Mm -hmm. Well, go on our website, www.nourishdoc.com. We are launching the app by July 4th. Hopefully it should be, the link should be there on the website mm -hmm. by the time uh, people go there, but there is mm -hmm. a, there is a form that they can fill up to get in touch mm -hmm. with us. But mm -hmm. the app is being uh, rolled out soon. So we will give one week free uh, app. Or, but in the uh, meantime, if someone has any questions, I am available. I'm accessible. So I'm happy mm -hmm. to answer any questions any woman has mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. And I hope to serve the women, as I said. Yes. I'm, I'm going to be one of them on the app. Now wait. <laughs> I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> because it's, it's needed. I remember when I talked to you, when I saw... And I was like, oh my gosh, I was just talking to my girls about it. And we were saying, oh my gosh, this thing. And then so this, this, um, and it's strange when it hits you, you will become so passionate and so understanding about wanting to do something about it. So yes, I will definitely be on the app and I'll download it and then start using because I know it's, it's important for my own uh, mental health as well as my own physical health. And it's important for me to, learn more just because mm -hmm. I've done my own research and doing things may not be that's all I need or may not be that some of them I may not need and rather I could take out and then mm -hmm. uh, add the right thing so then I wouldn't yeah. need to take so many things because I think um, it's best to work with someone um, I didn't have that luxury because I tried and when mm -hmm. I didn't I was like I gave up and I said I'm going to do my own research but yes, this way it gives me a chance to learn more and also know that we are part of the global network of women who are all in the same boat. And together we are learning to help each other stand up and not feel beaten, defeated, or kept down, but rather empowered 
mm-hmm. that there's hope and they can do something and they have the capability they need to move forward and realize that the best years are ahead and not what is already gone. Because if we can feel good now, we know that we can feel good tomorrow. But if we can't, we can't feel good today, we don't see tomorrow at all. We don't even dream of tomorrow. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And then um, one thing I'll say, if anything, anyone is going on out there that's struggling to manage this perimenopause and menopause and then trying to get answers, even if you're in your 30s, I've heard of some people having to go into premature uh, menopause mm-hmm. at 34. And I was shocked when I heard that. Uh, but yes, people have gone through that. If you're struggling with any of these things, you may reach out mm-hmm. to Amita. Or you may reach out to me at Love, Forgive, Live Podcast. The way the email address is L-U-V, the number four, give, live, L-I-V-E, at gmail.com. You may send me an email and say, hey, I heard this thing. I'm trying to get some information. What do I do? I'm feeling this way. This is happening. We can all work together to give you tools that you can use to get ahead. Um, I'm very passionate about helping us reach a happy place so that we are not feeling defeated. Mm -hmm. And for one person who has gone through it, I know many women have gone through it too. Now we don't have to suffer alone. We have a network of people to talk to globally so that we can all have answers and also learn that there are tools that we can use that actually work and not maybe it will work or maybe it will not work. Okay. One thing I will say is this. If you want to come on and discuss this, reach out to me. And if you want to discuss this further with Amita, reach out to me and we will Talk about it and figure out how that could work, okay? Thank you very much for joining me. I am blessed and I know my my guest, my audience will be blessed to learn this and know that there's hope out there for all of us. And we hope to see you next time. Thank you for joining me on Love Forgive Podcast. My name is Rhoda. Thank you for our guests for coming and we will be done and soon we will talk more about this and we would love to have you back soon and make this something that we could continue because what we have to talk about is not enough to talk about it just for an hour we could be stuck here for a whole night (laughs) so (laughs) thank you so much bless you for coming i love this topic and i love the fact that we are discussing this wide open and no shame attached to it Thank you.